Hello and welcome to PME Facebook Live event. It's the 1st of 2017. The last time we saw you was just before Christmas celebration. So we sincerely hope you all had a very good festive season. Welcome to everybody and thank you again for joining us here live. As you've just seen with Silvio, we have some fantastic things to be doing. It's all geared around Valentine's Day, so we're hoping to give you some really good hints and tips, lots of ideas and suggestions, and again, keep in touch with us, interact with us, say hello, send us some hearts because it's for Valentine's Day, thumbs up. We really want you to interact with us and we're just waiting to hear from you. Any questions that you may have, I do have one specific question I'll be answering here today that somebody had asked or posted on Facebook to us. So if your name is Shamsi Pearson, I think it is, if you keep tuned in and listening, we'll be having an answer to your question a little bit later on in the show. So I think without further ado, we should get very much underway. So we're going to start off with something very simple, but also equally very, very effective. As simple as using something as just granulated sugar. So this is something that everybody pretty much has in their kitchen. Uh, you could actually use something like a very large crystal sugar if you wanted to, to colour. But I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So thus the granulated sugar. Now, if I just pop these in the front here, and then Silvio can see those little coloured pots of sugar. Now, this one, these two, have actually been done with your airbrush colours, which you could use. So we've got a, a purple, this is that colour, and then the pink. And this one's actually been done with a 100% natural. Now, the airbrush colours, obviously, they have alcohol in, so it means to say these two dried out much quicker. The 100% natural, there is no alcohol in there so this could be something that you would prefer to be using now I'm going to give it a little shake always dangerous where I'm concerned because I tend to go whoosh color goes flying everywhere and although Silvio may be grinning now he won't be grinning if he's wearing pink blobs all over his shirt so I'm just going to put a little bit of color in here maybe just one I'll start off with and you can start to see how much is actually needed which isn't that much I will add another one in a minute but I just want you to kind of see how it goes I looked at the amount of sugar that I'd put into the bowl as well and I thought, oh dear, I'll be forever pushing that colour through those uh, granules. So you'll be pleased to know I did actually take a little bit of sugar out of the way. So just by pushing it in, it kind of congeals into kind of sections and then you just keep pushing and it starts to colour it through really well. That's just one little drop. So as you can see, a little bit does go a very long way it'll dry very quickly really to be honest and it is very soft and fluffy like I say the airbrush one tends to just have a little bit of a crusting on it so you just need to break it up a little bit before you carry on and there we go so this is actually now ready to sprinkle onto cupcakes or biscuits or whatever you would like to sprinkle it onto I'm actually going to just do a little bit of piping on a cupcake and we're gonna then just sprinkle it straight away onto our little cupcake. It could be onto a biscuit if you wanted to, whatever's easiest for you, to be honest. So if I just bring these two little in, and maybe there'll be a little hint and tip in here for you that will just help with your piping at the same time. Now, I'm just using uh, some white buttercream. We made it up with a white fat so that we can then have a, a nice white colour to it. Obviously, if we'd have used butter or margarine, that's absolutely fine, but we just have that yellowish hint of colouring coming through there. Now, whenever we're piping the cupcake, quite often people say, how do you get a nice tall swirl on your cupcake? And inevitably, that is too shallow. So we're just gonna throw in a little hint and tip for those of you who are thinking about cupcakes for your loved one at Valentine. And yes, Steve, if you are watching, uh, that's you, <laughs> for me. Okay, I think we've got a shout out. So maybe if we just look at that first, just before I do the piping. Hi, Paula. Hello. <laughs> it's um, Pat. <laughs> so yes, um, we're already very international. Fantastic. So um, uh, Joseph is saying hello from Hong Kong. Hello, Joseph. Blossom cake, Joseph? I'm hoping so. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Hello. And uh, Nana 
Sorry, Nana, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your name because I'm definitely going to get it wrong. But she's watching from Ghana. Oh, that's wonderful. Hello to Ghana. And Abigail Calloway says hello from Dorchester here in the UK. That's lovely. Hello, Dorchester in the UK as well. OK, thank you, Pat. As you can see, we've got a very high tech system for keeping you in touch and finding out what you want to hear. OK, so I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of icing just to make sure that that's coming through OK. And into the centre, first of all, always get comfy. I always like to hold the bag in the palm of your hand, secure the top of it so you haven't got your icing going everywhere. And I'm actually using a Gem 1M, which gives you that nice little swirl as you're working on it there. So just into the centre, just a little round we go. And then I'm just going to start piping round the outside edge, just dropping that down, come back up where you started. So you can see you've got that nice little shape on the go, which helps it go into a little tower onto the top. So that's our nice tall cupcake. So I am just going to pop him into here, like so, and give it a little sprinkle with that sugar that we've just coloured up. So we've got a lovely kind of valentine colour. There we go. I have popped it into a little box just with a, a small amount of kitchen towel there, just to make sure that we don't end up with sugar everywhere so you can just see if I give that a little spin round now we've also got some little hearts that we will be making a little bit later on so I think if we just added one of those in you'll see also what's coming up in a little bit later as well and we can place that one just to the front there so Silvio just wants to have a, a little look at that one I don't know if I've given you the best side of the cupcake or not but I'm sure you'll all let me know if that's the case pop those ones down there as well. Now, the other thing that I need to now move, oh, there's another shout out, that was perfect timing, Pat, just as I was about to move on to Candy Bark. Oh, well, we're truly international today, that's oh, for wow. sure. Uh, Erin Bow from Canada. Hello, Erin. Says, says hi. hi. Michelle Stevenson, Highlands of Scotland. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and uh, Frederic. Uh, says hello from the Netherlands. Wow, hello Netherlands and as well. And Fern from the Philippines. Oh, this is wonderful. Hello Philippines. Well, thank you ever so much everybody for joining us here live. Uh, I hope we can keep your attention and keep you very much interested and occupied here today. But we are a very truly international company. And also at the moment, it's probably a good point to say hello to our Hong Kong and China friends, staff and trade customers as well. Because we do know that you're also celebrating Chinese New Year of the Rooster, I believe. So we hope that you have some fantastic celebrations going on over there as well. Okay, so we're going to now move on to some candy bark, which is so simple and easy and effective to actually do. Now, before we get into details, I'm actually using a white candy button, pink one, and also some milk chocolate candy button. Now, I've got some little samples here, and Silvio did show you at the very beginning on the candy bark and how it could look. So we've got some lovely patterns in the candy that we're actually going to be creating and some lovely sprinkles over the top. Now, a very, very important thing to do is to make sure that you're using a very good quality non-stick bakeware, which is what we're doing. What you don't want is that awful warping that can go on sometimes in the tray. So you could do small, medium or large tray. I'm kind of a small to medium sort of size here at the moment. Uh, into the base here, I'm going to spray some releaser cake. Now, although your baking tray is going to be non-stick, uh, I know how this reacts when I'm using my candy, but if, for example, at home you're using a milk chocolate or a different candy, never quite sure how that's going to react. So I think it's always a good idea to just make sure that you are on the side of caution and pop yourself some release agent in there. It is primarily for use uh, with baking, but it works great on your tray when you're looking to add some candy into it. So I'm just going to spray a little bit on here. And I know what's going to happen here now, it's going to go everywhere, so I'll probably end up regretting that a little bit later on, I'm quite sure. Now, I have got some candy melting at the moment, and just while I'm getting ready to do it, I'm going to bring that over, now you can see. I actually, these are two of my three pots, I've got a, the white as well. Now, I'm actually going to talk about this now, because this is a good point for Shamsi Pearson to have a, an answer to her question that she posted regarding her melting of candy. Now, I've actually had these on just a number one setting and since about 10 o'clock this morning, I think, and it's perfect. It's, it's just slowly melted for me. 
Uh, I've actually managed to cram what is a whole bag into each of these little pots as well. And you can see one spoon or ladle is kind of holding up very differently to the other one. That's because a lot of the different candies do melt at different temperatures and when they are melted they can react quite differently as well. Red does tend to heat up very quickly so it's also very easy to burn the red easier than a lot of the other colours. So always think about that when you're melting your candy. But you can see this one's melted much thinner. I haven't added anything else into it and this is the pink and that's exactly how they've melted and continue to do so. The white is the same as the pink one as well. So you can see the differences there. We tend, if we needed to add any fat into it, we wouldn't tend to use an oil. My personal experience is that I tend not to get a very good result with it using our candy buttons. So I tend to use a firm vegetable fat, maybe a Trex or a cocoon, a cocoon, <laughs> not a cocoon, cocoon or something like that. <laughs> and that generally will give you a very good result. It's a firm fat, so it will set back to the temperature and style that you need it to. Oil, I don't find, tends to return the candy back to a very good setting position. So if that helps, hopefully it will. Now, I've got my melted candy. I'm gonna bring in my last remaining candy, which is the, the white one, and into the tray that I've just prepared, I'm going to just randomly pour some of my candy. Now this is going to look messy and you're probably all going to think that looks awful. What has she done? Uh, but bear with me on this and it will go, it will be fine. There we go. hope Silvio can uh, see that okay and I haven't got the pan in the way. So that's this one. So the, the pan that I'm putting this into is room temperature, just so that you know. And then I'm just going to randomly add in a little bit of pink. And you can see I'm just kind of sloshing it in there. I'm not being neat and tidy with this at all. I'm just trying to make sure that all areas are, are covered with a different colour, just as a bit of interest. A little bit of pink over in that corner and a little bit of pink over there as well. You do have a good amount of time to work with this. So I don't feel you have to rush too much. There we go, a little bit more, scrape it all out nicely, there we go. So this is where it's been very useful to have three little pots to work with, with the chocolate melter. And you could be melting in a variety of ways, but again, if you're using another technique, just be careful as well, because again, the candy buttons will be melting at a different temperature and you'll just need to make sure you give them a stir, even if they don't look as though they're melted. Give them a stir first to find out if they are, because the chances are you could actually just carry on stirring for another half a minute and it will carry on melting. There we go. So that's sloshed into there very much so. Then I'm just gonna pick it up and give it a wiggle. Give it a little tap if you prefer, but you can see that that just flattens your candy how it needs to be. And then, very easy and simple, just take your palette knife. Now I'm gonna go in a reasonable way because that's gonna help it smash when it comes to smashing it a little bit later on. And I'm just gonna pull my mini palette knife through to give me this lovely feather pattern. And then what you could do if you want to is come back across the other way. Add a bit of a swirl and a swoosh as you go. There we go. That's nice and easy. Nearly ready to put into the fridge, but not quite. Oh, oh, I'm going to wipe it on my apron. Because into the top, we're actually going to start putting some very nice, luxurious Belgian chocolate curls. I've got caramel, strawberry, and white as well, just to give it a little bit of extra yumminess as we go. So let me just drop those in over there and I can smell these, it's very lovely. I love caramel, and I love strawberry as well. Well, I think, to be honest, we all love some candy and chocolate, don't we? I mean, how quick and easy is this for Valentine's? So if you haven't got time, like myself, then this could be done very, very easily. And I will show you the smashing of it as well, but with one that's been pre-done. Now, if you really wanted to, you could even sprinkle a little bit of your sugar that you've done into the top of it just to give it a little twinkle 
a bit of a, a little bit of a glitter as well not too much make sure you have thoroughly mixed it in though before you do that and that's now ready to go into the fridge and we have a shout out as well there we go so i'm just going to bring this in while pat's coming over to do a shout out okay Paula. Well, we've got quite a few shout outs and we've got some questions oh okay then let's go so for it. here we go um joanne uh, Chapman is from Ireland and says hi. Hello, Jo. Um, Hamida says hello from sunny South Africa. Oh, lucky you. That's it. <laughs> I'm jealous. Rub it in. <laughs> and uh, Ping Wong from Harlow, um, but it also says from Singapore. Oh, so lovely. Hello. Maybe on holiday. May I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And Laura says hello from Sweet Occasions in Sunderland. Hello, Sweet Occasions and Laura. And she says um, we love your products and she sends you a lovely kiss. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much. And uh, Shirley says hello from Hong Kong. Oh, hello, Shirley. And Kathy from Ecuador. Oh, wow. So that really is international, isn't it? We've got thank you ever so much for everybody listening and watching and all shouting out. That's great. That's what we need to know. Uh, any questions, keep them rolling in as well. Oh, okay. two questions. So <laughs> I've, I've got a couple of questions, Paula, while we're on the candy. Absolutely. Uh, Michelle Stevenson says, can you add flavourings to the candy? Okay. And I've also got one from Joanne, and she asked, do candy melts need to be tempered? Okay. Well, I'll go in reverse. Candy melts don't need to be tempered because they're a, a candy, they're not a equivalent to a chocolate or anything like that. So they can still burn. So you do still need to make sure you don't actually overheat them, but you don't need to temper them. So that's a, an easier option. Uh, as far as adding flavouring in, anything you add into your candy, uh, like a liquid, will react to it. So you'll find that if we thin it down with fat, if we want to thicken it back up again, we'd add a, a couple of drops of water into there to thicken it back up. So you may find that if you decide to put any flavouring in there, that you're actually thickening your candy up. So just be a little bit cautious and careful when you go about it. Not saying don't give it a go, but at the same time you need to understand what might happen when you're in the middle of having a go. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Another shout out there as well. I'm, I'm still it's because I'm waiting to do a smashing of my candy. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, but this one's rather lovely. Oh, this okay. is um, from Sue Abel Jordan, and okay. she's aged 11. Oh, that is so lovely. And hello. she says hello from Halifax in the UK. Hello from us to you at Halifax. That's great. So are you going to maybe be doing this, I hope? Uh, just maybe helping mum or dad create some candy bark, or just generally, just because it's fun to make, to be honest. Okay, so this is actually one that's come out of the fridge already. So if Silvio can just go in, he'll actually see it shrunk back from the edge of the tin. It's been in the fridge, not in the freezer, so it should actually hop out okay. And before I start smashing it, I am just going to see, and it is actually going to come down fine. So there we go. And this is where if you use that release uh, a cake on there, it does help it slide out which makes life much easier now i would watch out silvio because i'm going to smash this i'm not going to keep going but just to give everybody the general idea so it's one two three let your regressions out and there you go you can see it started to crack into little pieces and then if you go again it'll just keep going so here we go one more and then you keep going but if i just open out this bit this is the bit i want you to see just in there where we did that swirl i went in quite deep with the candy and it's almost scored it so it's followed that lovely movement that's just in there so it's a good way of kind of marking it to help give you a bit of a guide for your sizes and then you just keep smashing do one more i haven't got too much room up here and i need to give it a really good go i'm just going to move that off there and it will drop so one more i don't know that that did it there we go. So we're starting to smash up. So you can see how to get those lovely little pieces that you need and then they can randomly assemble just into your little bags, etc. Or just even on a really nice plate, they look really good. So I'm going to move this out of harm's way very carefully just over here without dropping it over everything. And then we'll be able to to carry on. So that's the candy bark. Again, nice, simple and easy. So no excuses for not having a little go with that. And something else for Valentine Day or Valentine's Day, never quite sure which way to, to say that one, is these wonderful little fantasy hearts. Now again, Sylvia was showing you these just at the beginning. So you can see them on cupcakes or on biscuits or just maybe with the candy bark, you could actually stick them 
into that bark and that would actually look really cute and very very lovely so we've got four little hearts actually in the set so you can have a little look at those now i'm just going to leave this one out and just explain on the back of these is a handle and that actually slots into the hole that's in the gem roller pad so i'm just going to pop that into there i'm going to face this one towards myself so that it's easier for me to be able to to work with and i've just got a, a small selection of the designs and how they've come out and because of these little sections in here we actually end up with a bit of a bonus we get some little extra hearts that have come out from there as well now also because uh, i'm using gem now i'm looking at using some without egg gum paste so this has got a lot more stretch in it and if i was going to try and use something like sugar paste i really wouldn't have a very good result if i was trying to cut out with it I will be using sugar paste and embossing with these a little bit later on, but for the time being, we're actually just going to be looking at doing the actual cutout. So here's some pre-rolled gum paste, which I have actually coloured with pink, so you can see. I've been keeping it so it doesn't dry out, just so that we're saving a little bit of, of time. So if I just take the edge off there, you can actually see there is quite a lot of stretch in with that gum paste and I can roll it much thinner and much finer as well. Now I generally on the cutter tend to put a little bit of petal base which is the release agent and you always know as far as I'm concerned I always say buy one for your handbag and one for your cake kit as well because yes it is the best lip balm ever. So there we go so a little bit of that it just helps it release but it also just helps that paste sit just across the top for when I need it in place. And then I just take my rolling pin and I roll across this way. And you can see straight away that's embossed into there. And across that way, across the top again as well. So I just pull that down there. Now I did pre-roll and I was concerned about doing it. And I think I probably should have gone across the top again. But I can actually just use my finger just to tidy up around the outside edge. And this is where, if it starts to lift out, this is where your release agent, your petal base, actually does help. Because it just secures it into the cutter just to help give you that nice, neat edge that you need just while you're doing all the other bits and pieces that you need to do. Now, this little heart in the centre, that just needs a, a little bit of defining. So I'm actually just going to use the small end of the bone tool. And you can see that just sharpening up that cut in there and that will be able to lift out in a second i'm also either just going to use my finger which i do like to do i have to admit when i'm just embossing the detail but you can equally just use the ball bone tool or ball tool whichever one it is that you're choosing to use but i just think just to make sure it's a really good good cut and i can see pat wandering over there she's got a shout out you see i told you it's high tech here with our system <laughs> um, I've got three shout outs for you oh lovely all international uh, first of all from F F F Fabeo she says hello from Nigeria oh wonderful hello and Muyo says hello from Thailand and sends you a huge big smiley face oh that's lovely <laughs> and uh, Mendi, Mendi Kong says hello from Hong Kong oh that's lovely that's brilliant so even with all the celebrations over there everybody's still watching they're and still watching in. that's really really good to know and very much appreciated from us here at PME as well so thank you very much so we can see that we've got our heart, our main heart, all embossed design there, and also our little mini heart. Uh, what I've actually done then is pop them into just a flower former over here, and that just helps them have a little bit of extra shape in there, and then we can come along and we can dust them shortly with some luster. Now what I'm gonna do is just use the cutter, or one of them in a slightly different way. I used it on some sugar paste on a cupcake, just so that I've embossed with it, so that underneath that cutout heart, we've just got a bit more going on underneath there. So I'm just going to use some ordinary sugar paste. I have been pre-kneading all of my paste as well, just to make life a, a little bit easier, and just so that everybody doesn't get bored watching me roll out and knead lots of paste. So I'm only giving it all a very quick kind of freshen up where it needs be. So again, I'm just going straight onto the board. I don't want it moving around too much at the moment. And that should be enough. Just make sure it's lifted. 
and I will lift it again so it's going to have a circle. So let's choose a slightly different design and go with this one. I'm just going to push it quite firmly into the sugar paste, as you can see, so I get my design coming up. Now, I deliberately, I haven't uh, put any icing sugar underneath it at the moment, so that I'm not lifting it every time I push in, because otherwise it could kind of distort and they'll be going everywhere. So we may as well keep it quite symmetrical. There we go, so you can see you've got a nice design. Now I'm going to lift it and add in a little bit of icing sugar just underneath it so I can have a nice, a nice cut out. So there we go. And you can cut that out as you wish. Now if you wanted to add in any other detail onto here then you could do, you could use your stitch wheel, just kind of come, come along there with that. Extra little hints of design just coming along there. And then when you go to spray it, you'll find that you get a lovely effect coming up onto there. A little bit of piping gel, or if you want to use a, a little bit of jam, if you've got a favourite jam, then you can do that and use a little bit of your favourite there. So I'm just going to use a little bit of piping gel onto there. There we go. Piping gel, again, we tend to use for water highlights, all that type of thing. It's wonderful to colour. And if I just hold that in there, in case you haven't seen it before, you can get a good idea as to what that looks like. Over time, it does eventually dry nice and firm, but it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be using. And we tend to use it when we're modelling as well with modelling candy. It, it gives you a very good, strong glue. So that's our little over there. Now you can either spray onto here or you could just brush over if you wanted to. I've actually sprayed some luster into here earlier so it's all nice and dry now. So it's a good way of having a dust as well. So if I want to, I could actually just dust over the top. I am actually going to give this probably uh, a little spray in a second but you can just see a little bit darker to start with. And back in there, you can take some excess off if you want to, or it's nice to have darker areas and lighter areas as well. Just take the excess off and then you can come back over again. But you can see how that's picked up that nice pattern right the way across there. And it's got a lovely shimmer, so that's very romantic for Valentine's Day. And that's ready then to have a little heart stuck onto here. Now here's one that I've actually added a little bit of pearl luster onto it and I'm going to use a, a little bit of piping gel just across the back to stick that in position. So a little bit onto there and just into the centre it goes. There we go. And that can just then add in to our selection of biscuits as well. We've got a question. Fire away Pat. Pat's our PR <laughs> marketing director by the way. Multitasking today. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is from, from Paul. And he asks, um, are those modelling tools available in metal? So maybe you'd like to explain why it's not necessary for them to be yeah, in metal. Yeah, it isn't. And these are highly durable. And with our PME, you have a 10-year warranty on these as well. Um, they're actually designed in such a way that they don't roll around either because of these flat sides too. But they are really, really good to, to work with. And certainly the ones that I have at home, I've had for very many, many years. And they're made with a food grade, high quality virgin plastic. So there is no necessity to have to have something in a, a stainless steel, which we tend to consider to be uh, a better quality because it's more hygienic as well. So rest assured that if you do go with uh, the PME product that you are getting a really good product when you go with it. Durable, long lasting, you're in good hands. So hopefully that helps Paul. Okay. <laughs> so don't forget to keep bringing your questions in because we're happy to, to answer away as best as we possibly can. So I've got my order going on here and my next that I have on the go here is just using uh, an impression mat in some sugar paste. Again, it's your flexible friend. You can use either or side of this. And of course, keeping with that Valentine theme for the one in your life, that special person, it's all hearts. Hearts all the way. And again, it's sugar paste that I'm working with. And this is going to be uh, ready for some little roses that we're going to be doing. Again, just quick, simple hints and tips for everybody. Things that you can do very, very easily without too much fuss or time needed as well, which we're all very busy these days. So the quicker we can get things done, the easier it is. 
So that's my sugar paste rolled out. It is quite quite thick so that I can get a good, a good emboss with my mat. Now, generally speaking, we tend to suggest, especially if you work on a large area, that uh, something like a straight edge smoother, a uh, smoother polisher does the job. Also going over with the rolling pin, that also works really, really well too. So we can use either of these. But I also find that if I'm just doing a, a small amount quite often as well, um, and I want a, a very good impression, or maybe I haven't got the smoother out because I've been a bit lazy, just using your fingers can actually also give you a very good impression with these mats as well. And don't forget in the past we've shown you how to use uh, candy with these mats as well. You can cut them up, chop them up as well. And you've got this lovely heart design that now has gone into that paste. So just give it a little wiggle on some icing sugar, just a little bit on there. We don't want too much, just so that we can have a, a nice circular cut with our cutter and drop that onto our biscuit. There we go. Little twist. There we go. I'll leave that over there just in case we decide we need to use it for anything else. And again, just a, a little bit of piping gel just to secure it, or your jam if that's what you're you're using for Valentine. Z day. <laughs> there we go. And that's just straight onto the biscuit. Now again, you can add some dusting onto there if you choose to. I've still got a, a little bit of gold just on the edge of my brush, I think, so I can just pull that across very, very lightly. You can see it's a lovely shimmer, attaches really well, especially when it's onto that dry wet paste rather but I am actually just going to spray onto this one so that's how you could do it but I'm just going to use a little bit of the luster straight onto there and then by the time we've done the rose little roses that will have dried onto there so again make sure that you've got it forward facing I've got my handle on so I don't get it all over myself there we go just all over Sylvia sorry about that <laughs> so you can see you've got that lovely lovely shimmer evenly distributed across that biscuit on there ready you can add in little uh, serrated cone tool in there as well if you want to add in a few little extra details don't forget so swapping in now we're gonna bring in some rose buds this time so again we're keeping it nice and simple nice and easy to achieve and very quick as well and now we're swapping into using some modeling candy so again, it's one of my favourites, Modern Candy. I do love working with it. And again, very easy to work with. And I think very romantic, very Valentine's Day, to be honest, because it's all those things you love. It's candy for a start, so you can't go wrong. And it's just great to work with. Now I'm going to roll this one out so you can kind of see it in action, whereas everything else I've kind of pre-rolled. But that just gives you a, a good idea. And I'm going straight onto my non-stick work surface as well. Now we do tend to go a little bit thicker and I have to be honest, if we're doing something like this, uh, where maybe we get quite hot quite quickly, I do tend to go a little bit thicker with the paste anyhow. But I'm going to thin the edges down a little bit, just using a bulbulous cone tool. So, are you all okay out there at the moment? Don't forget, keep talking to us. Oh, we've got a question. What could that be? <laughs> Um, this relates to the spray actually, Paul, oh, and, and this is from Sue Bell, and she says, does the spray have a taste to it? I've not found it to have a taste at all, to be honest. Um, uh, there is a little bit of an aroma, uh, and not one that's distasteful, if I'm honest. I, I tend to like it. In fact, quite often we're all seen on the teaching team sniffing the air when we've been <laughs> spraying with the luster. Uh, but no, definitely... Um, no nasty tastes with that. We've also got alcohol free as well. So if for any reason you're not happy having alcohol uh, within the spray, you do have that as an option, which is, which is ideal. Now, I'm just going to sit down for a few minutes to do these bits. I don't know why, but there's times I like to just sit down for a minute, and there's one of them, I suppose. There we go. Now, I'm going to bring in a nice squidgy gem pad, just so that I can soften the edges. Now, I've just used a five-petal cutter. Now, you can use any size of the five-petal cutter that you want to. I'm using our largest PME one that we've got, and I'm just going to use my cutting wheel just to divide up each of those petals into a single because I'm just using them to create my little rose buds. 
There we go. I've actually got some here uh, in varying stages, little miniature ones that were going to do the single petal, uh, single petal over a cone, and then with the calyx on as well. So onto the pad with our individual petal, and then we're just going to roll around the edge just with the bulbous cone tool, just along there, and along there again and just pull that off if it happens to stick. And then it's very simple, just roll. Just lay that down there so that hopefully you can see. There you go. So it's just like a, a little ribbon rose. Give it a little squeeze and a roll between your finger and your thumb. And then that's ready just to peel back a little bit. Now you can thin down the base of it and then you can just trim that across with your cutting wheel or your palette knife and I've got a couple here ready so I'm just going to add that in with these like so and it does actually kind of smooth very nicely you can just thin them down and smooth them if that's what you want to do I've got a biscuit up here that they can sit on that I haven't actually glued yet I've added in a, a little bit of dust onto there so if needs be they could sit just in across there so you've got a large grouping of them so you could actually do a large number and add this onto a, a very lovely cake or onto your cupcakes as well so just pop that to one side while we move on now if we're going to look at using some red as well we've got another question on the way i'm going to leave those there so pat's headed over with another question i'm just going to carry on if that's okay yep, by all means. Uh, this is from erin Hello Erin. And uh, she's asking, do you make your own modelling candy and do you have a recipe? Uh, now then obviously uh, Samir can help you with this one yes. by putting up some information. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, so Samir could do that. But yes, we do have a recipe and yes, we are using our own. And it is so super easy to, to do and you can make a, a large quantity with your bag. Um, and I'm sure Samir's going to say what I'm going to say, but it's basically one bag of uh, your candy buttons uh, to 100 grams or mils of your glucose syrup. So you can quite easily, and there's no fuss involved in that um, at all. There is a video on it as well, and I think we've actually done this on Facebook Live as well, but maybe you didn't catch that one or you missed it. Uh, but you can kind of go back, have a little look, and like I say, go online to have a look. I don't, or we don't, I should say, uh, mess around kind of doing anything exceptional. With our candy buttons, having tried and tested lots of different ways to make it work, uh, we just found the easiest thing is to melt your candy, but don't over melt it. Pour unwarmed glucose syrup into the candy and stir it, and just make sure you don't over beat it, and uh, job done. Basically, pop it into a bag, leave it to cool out of the fridge, not in the fridge, and you'll find that you actually end up with a very lovely modelling candy and in whichever colour you decide to do. This was with the pink, uh, this red, obviously, and then with the green as well. So, And you can intermix those colours too, so you can get some really stunning results. So I'm just thinning around the edge again, just with the little bulbous cone tool on the petal. There we go. I'm just going to pop that down into the centre and then I'm just going to roll. I've put it down there so that I can get a nice little shape there so it's got a nice little waist if you can see that. And then just scoop that round nice and tight into there and then around. There we go. And again just pinch it to shape it and that gives us a very lovely little bud. And that bud's now ready to pop a little calyx onto. So I could do all of these, soften these as well, but I don't need to do all of those while you're here. If I want to keep some just ready for sprinkling around the table setting, perhaps just pop them into your former and that'll give them a lovely shape, just a little push into the centre there. Now, I've got some green again rolled out ready. There we go. And just with the calyx cutter. Now this is the largest calyx cutter again that I'm using to go with the rows. And again, you could be doing this uh, using different sizes. So I'm just showing you with the largest one. It gives you a much better view. If I sit here with a very small cutter, you're going to be finding it difficult to see what you need to actually see. 
So just run a finger around there, make sure you've got a nice clean cut, remove your calyx. Now, you can leave it as it is if that's what you want to do, or we can add in just a few little cuts with the cutting wheel, if that's what you decide you want to do. Oh, nearly took too much off that one. And just spin that around, there we go. Don't have to, but it just depends how much time you've got. And if the person you're doing this for is worth that extra effort, I'm not sure if I'll be getting time to do any of these, just so she know if anybody's listening at home. <laughs> oh dear. And then I'm just gonna thin slightly the edge, just at the top, just to give it a little bit of curl, and then just flick that off. There we go. Just on the outside edge. There we go. And just flick that over, and that's ready to just wrap around our little rosebud. Right, I'm just going to use glue so that I haven't got too much going on there. But can you actually see when you do use glue how it sits onto the modelling candy in a very different way to when it's on sugar paste? And that's why I find if you do use piping gel, you do get a much better result. I know Silvio's just homing in on that, so he's got that, he's got the thumbs up, uh, just into the centre. And then we've just got our little rose going on there. There we go. And that's our calyx just along our little rose and that's ready to sit onto our biscuit which i don't think i actually got ready in the end so what i'm going to do is just pop it onto an ordinary biscuit there we go and again if you want to add in a little bit of a highlight there with some luster dust that will come onto there very very nicely just catch across the edge there just a little bit of a highlight and that shows that up lovely. There we go. It's just on the go. It's trying to escape from me. There we are. So hopefully Silvio's got a good shot of that one. Looking down into there. Just leave that there. I've just squashed it into position so that you've got some of those there. Now also we could add in some leaves. So I'm just gonna use our leaf plunger. Again, you can choose any size that you want to. And I've just got a little bit of leftover rolled green. So that will use, we'll use that one up. So just give it a quick plunge, give it a wiggle. So we've got a good emboss onto there and just remove the paste. Just run a thumb round just in case and then just eject that out. And then we've got our leaf ready to add a little bit of movement to. Again, just bring it to the edge, bulbulous cone tool just across the outside edge there. And again, just across the outside edge on the other side as well. Give a little twist and a little movement there. And that can go and sit into your tray, or that can just go at the edge with your little rosebud that you've just made. And again, you can just pull a little bit, if you want to, of luster just across on there, just to make that shine and jump. Hopefully Silvio's got a good, good look of that in there. Again, very simple, a couple of different ideas there that are not difficult to achieve at all. Even if you're short on time, you can get these done very, very, very quickly indeed and have huge amounts of fun putting them all together as well. Like I said, I love modelling candy. I love making it and I love using it. it. It's just the best that there is. It's wonderful stuff to work with and so easy to make as well. So don't forget, if you do have any questions, just get back in touch with us and uh, keep sending us questions etc okay oh hedgehog now just quickly show you brush and fine pen also you could be doing some love and cookies and biscuits so that's just another little idea for you and then just as a very final uh, before you all disappear or have to go uh, just a real cutie little hedgehog that we could do. Now, he's all on his own at the moment, this little chap, and he's gonna have a little friend that we're gonna make. So very quickly, again, using modeling candy, and I've got some of these pre-cut out, ready to use. And I'm actually going to be using a Daisy Marguerite. First started using this years ago. We've got different sizes, so that just means to say you could do a whole family of hedgehogs very easily. So again, with the modeling candy, again, I've pre-kneaded, so you shouldn't need to give it too much of a workout. If you just roll it into a ball and then just give it a little pinch at the sides and then underneath as well, 
you can see you very quickly get that hedgehog shape come together. If I just twist them around there, you can push in for the eyes or you can actually then use a, a bone tool or ball tool if that's what you want to do. I cut in with a pair of scissors for his little mouth and, and then we just kind of use the blade tool just to open that out a little bit. So that's how you get him started. And then I'm going to swap, we're going to have three hedgehogs, and I've got some already cut out. But if I just run through so you can see, this is the size, second smallest Daisy Marguerite. In we go. Uh, just eject it, don't worry about embossing at all onto there. And then I just divide these in half, like so. And that just gives us what then becomes, oh, I've gone straight over it. This gives us our little hedgehog quills, if you like, that are all over him. So again, a little bit of piping gel, because that will stick really well. And we just build it up all the way around our little hedgehog. Uh, overlap, so they're not all in a straight line or anything like that. And we just keep building them up so you can see very quickly how they start to attach onto our little hedgehog here. Now we're also going to use some of those little hearts that we created. So you could add those in as you're going so that they're looking very cute. There we go, a little bit more piping gel just onto that one. And just push that into the paste as you're adding it in. Now if you really wanted to, you could also divide these up a little bit more so that each of the petals that we've got give you extra little spiky bits which look good too. But for speed, we've just kept it very simple and we're just adding up a little bit more into there. So we'll carry on uh, just adding those in. But then what you would need to do is just a little bit of black modelling paste just to finish his nose off and his eyes as well. So again, it's modelling candy. Just divide that like so and he's going to have quite a big nose. And I'm just going to stick that on. There it is. That just makes it cute and it makes it shiny as well. And divide that remaining section into half again just by using the scriber. Two little balls so that they're the same size. And a little bit of gel onto there. And same thing again. There he goes. So he's going to be a bit boss eyed so we can add in a couple of little dots. As he goes so you'd carry on putting all his little petals in as he goes and his little heart as well so that's a very quick way of doing a little hedgehog which is really cute again for valentine's day so it's been a huge thank you but i must say just before we go uh last time if you remember sylvia attacked strawberries was this you with the candy bark as well sylvia there's huge teeth marks in there have you been nibbling this stuff again I don't know. Anyway, a huge thank you to everybody across the globe for tuning in and saying hello for your questions and all of your interaction. It's been really great to, to meet you all again. So thank you. Have a lovely time and we will see you again later on in the year. And thank you.